you welcome uh, to blessings we are invite you to blessings today uh, the Lord has sent us to declare his will and to declare his favor uh, it's powerful to know that we represent God we represent our maker we represent our creator we represent his glory is powerful uh, today I would like to share a message on pathway to establishment. It is the will of God that all people who serve him, you get to a point of being established. Whereby you don't stagger aloud, you don't waver at all, but you are established by the grace of God. You are established. And life that we live, the life that we live requires that we be established. Uh, it's, it's not good to live. In all stages of life, in turmoil, turmoil, in confusion, that, you know, I, I believe every stage of life has something that you have attained and something that you are anticipating. For today, I thank God for this, and there's something that I'm looking forward to. You can't look forward to things and have, and you and you lack to have something that today has been attained. Life is a matter of faith, as the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. That faith, let me read this, this scripture by the grace of God. Uh, that is Hebrews. Uh, I hope you are okay with. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, verse 1. What is faith? Uh -huh. Thank you. God bless you. Now, we live by faith. We are saved by grace, but we live by faith. The mistake people did is to, to say we, live, we, we, we were saved by grace and live by grace. And sometimes the interpretation of grace in life is, 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 is out of context. We, we are saved by grace, but we live by faith. Now faith is the substance of of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you go to verse 6, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible, impossible, I say it is impossible to please God or to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Now, people make a mistake here that we, we, we fail to include the word diligently seeking. You know, God is a rewarder, not just a rewarder, but he is a rewarder of those who diligently seeking. We need to analyze one day the meaning of diligently seeking. It is persistence. It is increasingly praying in an increasing manner it is praying in a way that our ultimate desire is to see God, his glory, and to encounter his will. That's very important. And therefore today as we share about that, I'm saying there should be an aspect of getting established. Uh, there was a time I was sharing about the stages of life. And I said from 0 to 14 years of age, a young person should appreciate work and a young person should by the grace of god develop a self-concept for 20 to 25 a young person should now have what we call breakthrough with decision concerning occupation that's the area whereby people misuse their might their capacity their, their thoughts until by the age of 25, people are not able to do that. But by the age of 25, you are supposed to have 
cleared with decision for your occupation. From 25 to maybe 45, you become what I call competent in what you are doing. You are so competent, you are so active, so productive, so fruitful, so much extraordinary. You move and move and move. If you are a preacher, you preach a lot. If you are an engineer, you lily cliff for more. If you are buying property, you buy and buy and buy. You are raising children, you do it vigorously. It's a, an age of competence. From 45 to 55, we say, now you get established. An age when you need to be established. From 55, maybe to 65, you settle. From 65, going apart, you accept retirement. You do lighter work in management so that because you are, you are getting older. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, life it should aim at one point, one time, getting established. That's what we need. Let's see, how do we, what's the pathway to establishment? You need anointing and you need strength that speaks that way. You see, you cannot be established if your mouth speaks contrary. I always insist, 60% of your life emanates from the way you speak, emanates from the words of your mouth. Emanates from the confession you make. Emanates from the status of your talk. And that's why you need anointing and strength that speaks that way. I'm speaking my establishment. I'm speaking my victory. I'm speaking things that bring peace. I'm not confused. I'm speaking things that really uh, uh, point at. My mind and my heart getting settled and established. Another thing is, you need to destroy satanic messages. In life, there are satanic messages. You know, I was sharing the scriptures in Psalms 118 verse 17. When the Bible says, I will not die but live to declare the works of God. I will not. Which means, I see death but I refuse to die. I feel Somebody wants me to feel like dying, but I refuse. Uh, I, I, I says powers of darkness want to terminate me, but I refuse by the blood of Christ. I sense the confusion, the entanglement, the kind of life I'm in speaks death. You say, I will not die. By the blood of Christ, I will not die. By the word of God, I will not die. By the name of Jesus Christ, I will not die. I want to refuse to die because it, I discover it's God's will that I live and have a season to show in two ways, by word and action, his word us. And therefore, cancel satanic retrogressive messages. Tell the devil, I know you are, you know, according to John chapter 10 verse 10, Satan is a thief, Satan is a murderer, is a killer. So we need to destroy messages from satan he could be using people and their mouth he could be using announcement through social media in all areas i refuse to accept the the the, the move of the evil one and the move uh from evil people that's very important and that's very important now thing we need to do is make use of the chances that god give use uh, the chance of restoration. God gives chance for restoration. If you go to Genesis chapter 19 verse 15, let's see that scripture. Uh, Genesis. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Let's see. The, uh, you see, we have this, uh, the issue of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and uh, the angels are urging this man Lord to hurry, saying, arise, take your wife, your two daughters, who are here, 
lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Take your two daughters. Arise, take your wife, your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed. We are saying, use the chance that God gives you for restoration, for rescue, for becoming better. Don't lose chance. If God gives you chance to run away from shame, get out. God gives you chance to avoid entanglement, to avoid heaviness, and concentrate on your talent, do it. God gives you chance to rise up and declare his will. Make sure you do it maximally. Make sure you do things in a maximum way. Things, when, especially uh, when uh, the chance God gives you for restoration, don't miss. It's, it's, it's like, uh, I remember Genesis chapter 4 verse 6, when God was addressing the issue of Cain. Eh? This man missed the mark, missed the standard in his offering. And uh, he became, he had anger, a bad, he had anger that was actually reflected on his face. And, uh, and actually because of the problem, with his problem in the altar, the way he appeared before God, I think Cain has a heart, an attitude problem, a heart problem, an attitude uh, before God that made him not do things right. And God said to him, now, gentlemen, there's chance for you to restore. Go back and do the right thing. And he did not do the right thing. Instead, he persisted on becoming evil until he was the first person to discover how to kill. He murdered his brother. You know, what do you think about the first murderer in this world? Okay. Who taught him to kill? How? How do you discover? How do you feel like I want to kill? And you realize... Um, he had chance to become better and deny that. Another thing that is that you, everybody has a degree of resonance. You, you feel like you want to oversleep. You will feel like you want to just stay, live a life of pressure. Live a life of just enjoying yourself, but no serious work. No serious sacrifice. No serious uh, you don't want to push yourself uh, beyond proportion. You don't want to push your mind beyond proportion. You know, when you think and think until your mind, you feel like, ah, I don't know what to do. People just want to operate in comfort zone. But I say this, it's good we overcome resonance in a real way. And we push our minds to operate, to be productive to the maximum that we can. Use your Rex to be productive to the maximum that you can. Use the talent to be productive. Overcome deficiency. Overcome. It's not good at our age when we are young, not doing things in a complete way, and expecting that you do them later, and you end up becoming old, not having done what you really desire to do. Do things in, in a whole way, complete way now. If preaching, preach. If it is running, run. It is, if, you, if you are managing a child, do it with all your heart. If you, are, if you are putting up a building, put it in the right way. Do not be half-baked. And that's why God says, arise and shine, for your light has come. It's just according to Isaiah 60 verse 1. Chance to arise and shine should be used adequately by the grace of God. Another thing is, we need to arise and start moving in the direction of obedience. Arise, start moving in the direction of obedience. You see, the Holy Spirit can, can only facilitate and confirm obedience. He cannot move with you in rebelliousness and disobedience. And so, if you are to enjoy life and sense restoration in Jesus' name, oh my God, arise now. Take the direction of obeying God. I say make a decision of obedience now. Make a decision of flowing with the Holy Spirit now. You remember the story in the book, in the, the, the vision that God gave 
uh, Ezekiel, 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 prophet Ezekiel in, in Genesis, in, in, uh, in the Bible, you know, the Bible talks about very unique thing, Ezekiel 47, when when uh, there was this water flowing from the altar towards the east, and Ezekiel was asked to cross, go across the water. It, it went up to his ankle. When the second time, close went up to his knees. That time, close went up to other part. But as he went across the fourth time, I think the fourth time, the water was too much up to his neck, and he said he could not cross the water was more the water was more powerful than his ability to cross over so he could only toot and move in the direction of the water and when he started flowing swimming moving with the waters he found that ahead there the water is healing the dead sea ahead there the water is producing evergreen productive trees in the backs of the liver. Uh, the only straight thing is the, that liver could not heal swampy waters. It has a meaning uh, in that. And therefore, in Jesus' name, arise and flow in the direction of obedience. When Ezekiel was able to flow in the direction of obedience, he was able to see how the living waters from the altar are productive through the desert he used this he used the salty water the dead sea is healed through the, the desert on its banks is producing evergreen and ever productive uh, trees that's very very important by the grace of god in genesis chapter 13 verse 16 Genesis 13. Uh, let's see the scriptures. 13 verse 16. The Bible says something in, important. Uh, hmm. uh, the Lord, let's start from 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, after separated the root, as they have separated, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Now, note the sequence. The first one, Abraham was able to cry up to the higher pinnacle, the mountain of separation of the Lord. And the Bible says, as he went up, the Bible says, the Lord appeared to him and said, lift your eyes as far as your eyes can see. From liver Euphrates to Mediterranean Sea, from Lebanon down to Negev Desert, all these lands belong to you and to your descendant. And God comes back and says, Now, I did not only cause you to see, I want you to arise. Walk in the land through its length and width. There is a call to walk in what God showed you, there is a call to participate in what God showed you. There's a call to become active and actually to become effective in what God showed you, in what you're doing. God says, arise. Walk in that business. Walk in that family. Walk in that vision. Arise. Walk in the Lord through its length and its width. You are not just to sit there and talk about the vision. Walking means an experience of tangible experience, tangible experience. I'm actually stepping on it. I did not only see it, but God caused me to step in it, to step in its strength and its breath. And now, friends, remember we're having this good topic on 
we need to arise for establishment. You can't be in the desert. You can't move in tents throughout. Sometimes God wanted to cross over Jordan and settle in Canaan. And God said, you, this is your Lord, build your house. This is your temple, give your tithes and offering. This is your son, raise this son. This is your family. God wants you to, to be established. You can't just be a man moving around with women and you, you don't know. No, no. You must be established in one way, one family way. You can't just be a woman and whatever. You need, even if you are a single mother or a single, you need to be established in your mind in what the truth you know from God about you. We rebuke Satan and all his works and we now declare that God set you free now from confusion, from fear, from every deception. And now as I preach, start your pathway to being established. God bless you. God cover you.